welcome to the next session of the Future Print Virtual Summit. And this is going to be a great one because it's looking at something that no one else is really looking at over the next few days, um, security printing. And I'm really pleased to have with me John Corral, who is founder and managing director of IIJ. And he has something like 30 years experience in the inkjet industry um, with companies such as Domino, Videojet, Zar, Xenia. So he's, he's certainly been in the industry for a long time. Welcome to you, John. Thank you, Fraser. Not a problem. Now, it's surprising, isn't it, how much inkjet is being used in packaging, but also security printing is something that's coming to the fore, isn't it? And you're going to talk about that. Yeah. Brilliant. So, John, um, do you want to take the slides and then you can give us a little bit of a flavour of, of what is happening at IIJ in the uh, security that means I'll, uh, take over here. Yep, brilliant. And I'll let you know when we've got the slides in front of us. Fantastic. So if you just go to slide sharer. Brilliant. John, to you. Thank you very much. So, hello everyone. My name is John Corral. I'm the boss of Industrial Inkjet. Um, we are involved a lot in inkjet printing of in the security market, security printing applications. So that's the that's my talk today. That's the subject I want to cover. So what is security printing? If you look at Wikipedia, security printing is to prevent forgery, tampering, and counterfeiting. So it, it's it's not like ordinary printing, it, ha it has a purpose. It's trying to prevent crime, if you like, trying to prevent fraud. The areas that we particularly look at, that we're particularly involved in, are identity products, such as passports, driving license, credit cards and finance cards, brand protection, traceability, such as with pharmaceuticals, currency and then more general printing such as government documents or certificates. I'm going to talk a little bit about these, these different areas. First one and probably the largest market for us is identity products. Identity products means um, printed products used to identify the individual. If we look at passport, inkjet is already dominant but it tends to be low cost thermal heads printing just the black text. The other thing you see a lot in this market is the use of modified desktop print. You'll see a large high speed pass passport printer. This, the type of machine that would be in a passport office mass producing passports, but using maybe 10 modified desktop printers with a very complicated mechanism feeding the printers in and taking them feeding the passports in and taking them out again. That's obviously very complex, and, and that's a reason why I think more industrial inkjet systems are becoming commonplace, particularly using piezo DOD heads. But perhaps the main driver is the inks. Passports are, the, the level of security is going up all the time. The demand to prevent copying and faking is going up. That means more special inks, such as fluorescent inks, and that's driving it more towards industrial piezo printheads. It's very difficult to put these inks through modified desktop printers. Looking at ID cards, um, laser engraving is still the dominant technology, printing black by, um, on the card by laser engraving. What we're seeing now is both on passports and ID cards, is this combination, and I'll come back to this, this is called layered security. Having more than one covert or secret print technology on your product. So this example is the mobile al fresco. It's a four color printed image, but the black is done by laser engraving and the CMY is by inkjet. And this kind of layers, this is, um, something I think that's coming. The, the government departments want to be sure that nobody can easily copy it. So using different technologies adds to that security. Another market is financial cards. At the moment, thermal transfer printing is still very much um, very popular. 
but it's quite slow. Inkjet is faster. The thermal transfer is really slower than the other processes. Whereas inkjet is faster, inkjet doesn't slow the machine down. It doesn't hold the machine. So we're, we're seeing inkjet starting to become mainstream in, in printing credit cards or financial cards. And suppliers such as Datacard, Mulbau, and Atlantic Zyser are already quite strong in these markets. These kind of cards is growing very fast. It's a key sector for, for the inkjet industry. Brand protection, if you look at the bottom of your laptop and you've got a hologram on there, um, a Windows hologram, every one of those has got a unique ID number on it printed with invisible. So this is what we tend to think of as brand protection. And we tend to think of it as being to prevent counterfeiting, prevent fake copies of software circulating. Very often it's not actually for that purpose. It's to do with traceability. It's to do with making sure that legitimate product was not smuggled across a border, so avoiding tax, or perhaps making sure legitimate product ended up in the right country where it was supposed to be sold at the right price. If the supplier's got a different price scheme for each country, he needs to make sure the right product ended up in the right country. So very often brand protection isn't about um, identifying fake product, it's making sure the right product got to the right place. The process to do brand protection is quite expensive. It's not just the printing, you need software, track and trace, you need people out on the street. Um, Met, you know, scanning codes and making sure the right product is, is where it should be. So it's quite an expensive process. It tends, therefore, to be used on expensive goods, such as mobile phones, such as software, perhaps perfume, laptop computers. Alcohol and tobacco um, are, are more common now. They, it's penetrating into those markets. It's quite interesting recently, there's been a lot of talk about garment and apparel market. The box in the corner there shows that counterfeiting is worth about, or is costing the industry about 1.8 trillion a year. So we're now seeing this kind of brand protection label sticker used on fairly regular garment or apparel for the first time. So this market is definitely growing. There is a move to put brand protection directly onto products, getting some, some code or some invisible um, security feature directly onto a product. Uh, interesting in the Middle East, this is being used for bottled water, so verifying you've got actual real water, I guess. Another segment of the market is track and trace. This is obviously pharmaceuticals where regulation supply. So the main sec segments for this market are pharmaceuticals, medical devices, or cosmetics. Point to remember is it's not just the blister pack or, or the, um, the, the tablet bottle that has to be have a unique identifier. It's the box it's in, it's the carton of of similar boxes and potentially the pallet on which those boxes are, are, are shipped. So you've got a whole series of um, products in larger and larger containers, all of which have to be tracked and traced. Because this is a regulatory requirement, the cost of the system is not so much of an issue. With brand protection, it's not regulatory, it is down to the brand owner to pay for it. So they tend to be a little bit more cautious about investing money in this. But in pharmaceuticals, it's regulations, you have to do it. So that there isn't quite the, the worry about how much this system is going to cost. And these systems are expensive. It's not just the printing, the printing's a fairly trivial part of it. It's the, the software, the logistics, all the way between the factory where the product was manufactured 
and you, the customer in your pharmacy's store, being handed a, a bottle of tablets, that the product has to be traced all the way through that system. So the software, the handling, is probably far more expensive than the actual printing. There's a number there. Track and trace market was estimated as $2.1 billion last year, forecast to double by 2024. So this is a, a still a fast-growing segment. Tax stamps is quite interesting. Tax stamps, again, is, is regulation. It has to exist, therefore, um, printers need, need this capability. At the moment, the requirement is really a fairly simple covert ink, like a single color fluorescent ink, just to prove this is a real tax. But we imagine, we, we expect that that will grow, and that the picture there shows multicolor, red, green, and blue printing. So that this is growing. Tax stamp in Eastern Europe is important, and it's growing. It's a good market segment right today. So how big are these markets? If we look at the passport market, there's about 1.6 billion people in the world. Generally, they change every 10 years. So 156 million passports a year. Based on typical production speed of a passport printer, that's 800 machines that the world market could be imagined to be 800 machines. We know from experience it's a lot more than that, really. Places like embassies and consulates, they want their own printer, but they don't use it very much. The, the volume of product they print, the volume of passports, is a lot less than a big passport office would generate. So we're talking a world market of about 2,500 machines. That, that is the, um, you know, the size of the market that, that we're aiming at. Passport contracts are um, awarded every 10 years. So about every 10 years, potentially, you're looking at new te technology, new machines being purchased. Um, it's quite a lumpy market. We were involved in a tender for the UK post-Brexit passport a couple of years ago, which unfortunately, Theresa May passed to uh, one of our European um, competitors, if you like. But that was something like 35 machines for the UK passport. So it's a good size um, project for us. It would have been rather nice to have. There are smaller countries, there's, there's an undercurrent of smaller business, but it tends to be a bit feast and famine with the, with the larger countries, whether you get um, a big contract or not. That's passports. Here's a couple of passport machines. Large one on the left is a high-speed machine. This is the type of equipment you would see um, in a passport office, essentially. Little machine on the left, that's more for embassies or consulates. That letterbox slot on the left, you put your passport in there, about five seconds later, it comes out the other side fully printed. Another market ID cards, similar size machine to the large one in the previous slide, where typically these machines are printing 3,000 to 6,000 cards an hour. They're faster than a passport printer. The ID card market is, is large in passports, but machines are faster. So in the end, you probably end up with um, an installed market there of about 5,000 machines. So that's the size of the target market for an inkjet machine producer. So let's talk now about geography, about geographical trends for security printing. Europe is very much the technical lead. It's in Europe that um, governments are pushing for more security for, uh, to reduce the chances of fraud. So it's here we see things like different colored fluorescent inks, um, features like microtechs. They're getting demanded, they're becoming a requirement. So Europe is always where the technology is moving faster. East Europe, it tends to be things like tax stamps and track and trace, but very often they can do that with low-cost inkjet, like uh, Hewlett-Packard thermal heads. They don't really need more expensive, more capable equipment. 
North America, not so many passports as a fraction of the population, and the level of security that is requested is, is generally lower. I um, mean, take, for example, the money, it's still just printed green. So they're, they're not as uh, far on with security as, as perhaps we are in Europe. Biggest opportunities in USA are traceability for pharmaceuticals and bank and finance cards. Now, Africa is very interesting. There is a push towards decolonization. They want to do this stuff themselves. But you also got a problem of fraud and corruption. So currency is still mainly printed outside of Africa. There are a lot of opportunities. There's a list of countries there, Mozambique, Rwanda, Zambia, where they are looking to do security printing to combat the high level of fraud. But we tend to find that the sheer cost of the project is a problem to them. Government printing works, maybe they can, they can afford it, but other printing companies generally can't afford you know, more sophisticated security printing equipment. Interesting side issues, there's still a lot of check printing there. So Nigeria and South Africa between them, that's 40 million checks a year. So there's still some business potential there. Asia, not a lot of passports in, in China yet, it's growing. We, we forecast quite a growth in China and India this year. Obviously, with the virus, things are not so, not so good. The international travel has gone and the need for passports or ID cards has also gone. Hopefully, that will bounce back in time. Um, as in Africa, China still has a lot of check printing, so there's opportunity, opportunities there. One thing to think about in terms of um, printing equipment, security printing equipment, is most of it still manufactured in Europe or USA. So there's not a lot, for example, in Africa, there's not a lot of domestic production of machinery yet. Perhaps at best, there's people uh, building equipment onto license from Western producers. Okay, so that's geographic trends. Talking about the technology trends, Printing security inks, fluorescent or covert inks, a lot of the time you just want to know the inks there. So very high resolution isn't needed. 360 DPI is probably enough. For higher ends such as passports, ID cards, uh, tax stamps, finer text, higher print quality is required. So 600 DPI plus is required. We tend to find for um, you know, printing the passport faces, particularly the eye, to make the eye look good, you need a small drop, fairly high resolution, um, typically in the order of three and a half picoliter. The little example there of the 0.8 point font, that's 3.5 picoliter inkjet print. That card, by the way, is printed single pass um, at high speed. Talking about speed, a lot of the time the application is integrating the inkjet into a conventional line with litho or high speed flexo. So typical speed requirement is 200 meters per minute. Uh, we come across continuous inkjet technology being used and that's perhaps up to 300 meters per minute. 200 to 300 we're fairly comfortable with. If you get on to currency printing, they are generally looking for 600 meters per minute. Now that's getting quite a challenge. That's quite difficult. Luckily, sheet-fed currency is slower. It's, it's in the range 100 to 200. For many security applications, particularly the ID applications, speed isn't an issue. The passport printing machines, credit card printing machines, the other processes in the line are generally slower than inkjet. So inkjet is not a bottleneck. It's not going to cause them a problem to change over to inkjet. What about ink trends? There's an interesting push to water-based, but it's not yet driven by regulations. 
when you talk to people about that, what you find is it's the 10-year contracts, the 10-year supply contracts that frighten people. What happens if they commit to a contract and halfway through, the government changes the rules and you can't use UV inks? You've still got a supply, you're still committed, but now you don't have a solution. So there's quite a push at the moment to change from UV to water, purely in case something goes wrong, in case of future regulations. In terms of kind of inks in security printing, high-end security, again, things like passports, tends to use covert inks, invisible inks, fluorescent inks. These are typically UV fluorescent, but as it says there, there is a move away from UV fluorescent to infrared up-converting and down-converting inks. There's also for, um, for less critical, less high-level security printing, there's things like uh, microtext, haptic effects, which means touch effects, things like tamper-proof inks. The security printing industry, the materials are changing. So passports, currency is moving from paper to polycarbonate. That means new inks are required. You're not going to use the same inks on polycarbonate as used on paper. That's an opportunity for us. If they need to change the ink anyway, perhaps it's time they should look at inkjet. There's also a lot of varnish effects and foil effects. So things like holograms or combination of hologram and some um, inkjet printing. This seems to be quite uh, growing at the moment, particularly with finance, uh, credit cards, financial cards. What are the main major opportunities? As I just mentioned, the change from paper to polymer um, gives us an opportunity. People know they've got to make the change in ink technology. Perhaps it's time to look at new printing technology. Layered security is important. This means having more than one security feature on the product, such as the one I mentioned earlier, where the black was done and the color with inkjet. Speed is generally, apart from the higher speed currency, speed of inkjet is not particularly um, a problem to us. But one thing to remember is that in the application where the passport machine goes into an embassy, for example, this is not in a, a, a printing shop, it's in an office, it's on carpet. So it's a very different machine. You can't have the situation where the operator must be a skilled person. You're not going to be very um, welcome if your machine is going to drip ink on the floor, for example. So it's a different environment, a different mindset required in the development of that machine. Currency printing is a largely untapped market for us. So large, at the moment, variable information is largely printed by numbering boxes, mechanical numbering boxes, and that hasn't changed for a long time. But the market is starting to change. Governments are starting to look for currency with more security features, more capability, such as things like color changing, or so changing fonts continuously. And again, as we mentioned, the change from paper to polymer is causing people to rethink anyway. One of the main issues for inkjet, as I mentioned earlier, is the high speeds for roll to roll. It can be up to 600 meters per minute. There's also in this market at the moment, there's a bit of a, a brick wall. I think no one quite wants to be the first. Everybody is looking for a very high degree of proof that the technology is going to work for them. That means a very large, expensive demo system essentially running for a long time to prove the capability. So this is a bit of a stumbling block for people trying to move into currency printing with inkjet. Traceability, there's some business opportunity there. I already mentioned tax stamps. Downside with the tax stamps is you could probably do it without the more complex, sophisticated inkjet, at the moment anyway, but the rules. Alcohol duty marking, 
direct to product that seems to be growing. But a very interesting example here: uh, Russia has decreed that all milk products must have a unique identifier. So every milk carton, every pack of butter must have a, a number that can be traced all the way back from the consumer to the, to the factory. Interesting, the barcode data has to be purchased from the government. So you could say this is uh, a form of taxation, essentially. But from our point of view, it's a high volume application, it's high speed, lines need to be about 300 meters per minute. This is quite a good application for us. We're quite keen on this one. Very quickly then, what does IIJ offer? We have a lot of technology with different inks, different applications, a wide range of different machines that, that are designed to, to suit different security printing applications. To summarize then, security print is fast growing market. The 8 cell drop on demand inkjet has a lot to offer, particularly wide ink capability, the, the ability to run all of these different security, but also print resolution and speed are fine for most applications. Security printing is very technology driven. It's once everybody can do it, it's not secure anymore. So you're constantly trying to stay ahead of the crook, stay ahead of the people who want to commit fraud. That means you're constantly developing new inks, new software, new techniques of verification and reporting of the print. So basically the message to any company wishing to be in this market is the technology is going to move quickly. And if you want to be in this market, expect continuous, rapid technical development. Fantastic. Thank you, John. That was really, really good summary of the, the kind of market potential. A um, couple of quick questions. I'm going to ask a couple of questions because I'm intrigued myself. Let's say you're interested to come into this space, into this marketplace, because you have a client or whatever reason. Let's let's just say the small passport machine is an example and it's the small one not the biggie what kind of cost are we talking about roughly well you, you've got to remember that a passport it, it's not just the inkjet the inkjet inside that um there's a certain cost there but the machine has to handle the passports mm -hmm got to verify the prints with, with cameras. It's got to hook into a network and, and communicate what it's done and, and, and what's happened. But I'm just trying to get a, a feel for this sort of scale. Okay. One-off kind of price for the inkjet in there. Um, you're, I would say you're above 50,000. Pounds. Yeah, but I mean, it's not, we're not talking half a million. We're talking, you know. But, but that's the inkjet. But, yeah. but Concern is you've got to think the whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Bear in mind that's that's a seven column single pass machine in there. It's yeah. Not just printing CMYK. It's printing red, green, and blue security inks as well. Yeah. And uh, and on that note, I'm just intrigued because you're talking about quite sophisticated technology, and I just wonder about the partnership relationships you need to get uh, and need to have to deliver something as as specialised as this. Does it take quite a lot of effort to develop those relationships? I think you, you've got to certainly develop a very good relationship. It's, it's the ink, it's the inkjet machine builder, it's the overall machine builder, who's essentially, in that case, my customer, the guy who builds the, the complete line. And then you've probably got a camera supplier who, um, I mean, so, some of the machine builders do it themselves, but others buy in the cameras. So you've got to be able to trust the camera supplier. How do we share data from him? I need to understand exactly what the camera is doing, what information it can give me at what speed. And, and you get an issue. You know, you, 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 we were running a, um, a, an FAT test, a, a field acceptance test here last week. The barcodes are occasionally misreading. Now, is that the media? Is it the printer? Is it the ink? Is it the yeah. camera? or is it actually the overhead lighting that's somehow interfering? It's, it's very interlinked. You've got to work well together if you're going to solve such issues. 
Yeah. Um, just a couple of others. Uh, just interested in other other markets like government forms. I mean, you know, are you is that one of the segments that might be interesting? Yeah. So so we're quite active in that. As I mentioned earlier, it's integrating the inkjet onto existing presses. Um, a year or so ago, you know, we did a large man Roland. It's quite complex that the presses um, self feeds itself and the chain drive for the paper had to go right through the middle of the ink chain. So it's quite uh, complex engineering work. I didn't really talk about it because it varies so much. It, it's what you're developing for one customer can be completely different to the other customer. It tends to be larger machines, wider machines certainly will be fast. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe the level of security on a government document would be less than would yeah. be demanded on a passport. Yeah, sure. And, and, and I guess that leads on to that question of layered security. I think this is um, a point that's been made to me by both machine builders and security printing companies several times. We can sell a great inkjet system, but they're always thinking, okay, what do we put with it? Um, inkjet by itself is seen as perhaps one layer. What else can be applied? They want multiple layers to make it many times harder to copy. Uh, if, uh, give an example of um, using inkjet as two of the layers. Printing a barcode, and you can scan in and it gives you some data. Print on top of that barcode with an infrared readable link, an invisible link. Scan it with that scan and you get a completely different code. So, so this is layering. This is two different security features in one place on one product. Interesting, interesting. John, um, I think that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for your time. It's been excellent giving us a little bit of insight into security printing. Um, is there anything, any sort of one final thing you want to mention as we, as we wrap up? No, I, I, I would just, the, the same caution as in my summary slide, it's good market, it's technically very challenging, and it moves very fast. So it's not for everyone, I think. John, thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. Thank you, Fraser. Bye. And just, just as a little side note, um, just to sort of give us a little bit more content, John and IIJ have got a video that they'd like to play now to give you a little bit more clarity in terms of security printing.